Welcome back to the Chem OG. Today we're going to revisit one of the stereoisomers that we discussed previously, and that is diastereomers. And so remember that diastereomers are molecules that have the same exact functional groups, but how it is that those functional groups are arranged spatially in certain locations is not exactly the same. And so when we talk about what the points of differences are between diastereomers, it's gonna be at some locations, but not all of them. And that means that diastereomers are not mirror images of one another, because if you glance at your mirror image, everything in your mirror image is completely flipped. So if we're only flipping some things, then we're not looking at the mirror image of a molecule. And if you recall, the mirror image of a molecule is known as its anine humor, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about diastereomers. And so an example molecule might look like this. There's uh, three key features of this molecule that may make it unique. For example, I have a chiral center over here. There are four different substituents attached. I have another chiral center over here, and I also have this pi bond, and that could possibly create points of uniqueness. So if I contrast this molecule with the one that's right below, I see that the orientation around the pi bond has changed. This thiol group is still in the same place, it's still on a wedge, and the methyl group is still on a dash, which is pretty much what we have up top. But I also noticed that I flipped these guys over here. Um, now the methyl's on a dash, whereas previously the methyl was on a wedge. And so these molecules are certainly not mirror images of each other. And if I take a look at their intermolecular forces, in other words, if I take this molecule in a pure mixture of only this compound, and I take a look at how this compound interacts with itself, it's certainly gonna, not gonna interact with itself the same way that these molecules down here are going to. And so because these molecules are gonna have different intermolecular interactions, it means that they're going to have different physical properties. So the boiling points of these two compounds are not gonna be the same. The way these molecules, you know, and, and how it is that they interact with each other, whether it's hydrogen bonding or van der Waals interactions or whatever the case may be, dipole-dipole interactions, those are not gonna be identical to each other. So I don't expect things like, you know, the boiling point, I don't expect their vapor pressures to be the same. I don't expect, expect their solubilities to be the same. So whenever you take a look at a pair of diastereomers, their physical properties are definitely very different from each other. And so when I have a particular type of diastereomer, and that is uh, a pair of molecules that differ at exactly one chiral center. So remember we said that diastereomers can differ at some chiral centers and we kind of left it open at that. But if they differ at exactly one chiral center, they're known as epimers. So let's take a look at an example of mannose, which is a, a, a saccharide. Um, and if I take a look at these two molecules, this chiral center right here, and I know it's a chiral center because it's got four different substituents. If I contrast that with this chiral center over here, they're not the same. Right? You'll notice that the hydroxyl group over here is pointing upwards, whereas the hydroxyl group down here is pointing downwards. But if I talk about all the other chiral centers on this molecule, whether it's this carbon or this carbon or this carbon or this carbon, the other chiral centers are exactly the same. It's only this chiral center that's a point of difference between these two. So that makes these two molecules epimers. Now, when it comes to sugar molecules, whenever you have a pair of epimers that differ at this particular carbon, and this carbon is unique because it's the only one that's attached to oxygens. If you have a pair of molecules that differ at that carbon, the one that's attached to oxygens, which is what we have here, they are known as anomers. So epimers that result from uterotation are known as, an as anomers. And so these molecules can actually convert one back to the other by opening into a linear form and closing back into the other ring. So um, this ring can open up. And when it closes back down again, it can close back into the original form or it can convert back to this one right here. So that's something we can take a look at when we take a look at carbohydrates in particular. But know that when you have uh, molecules that are epimers at that chiral center, at that carbon that's connected to oxygens, they are known as anomers. And so another thing we can talk about with respect to diastereomers is optical rotation or sometimes it's called what's known as specific rotation. So depending on your textbook, it's called either one of those things. And when we talk about the specific rotation, it essentially refers to how a molecule rotates plane polarized light. So whenever you have a chiral molecule, it can rotate plane polarized light in a very specific direction. And so if we take a look back at the two molecules that we just saw, 
right? Um, the molecule on the left here is known as the alpha anomer, and the one on the right here is known as the beta anomer. And both of these molecules are known as mannose. Now, the specific rotation or the optical rotation of alpha D mannose, which is the uh, molecule on the left, is plus 29.3 degrees. So when we uh, subject it to a polarimeter, that's the reading that we're going to get. The reading for beta D mannose is negative 17. So totally unrelated to that number 29.3. And if you remember, the optical rotation or the specific rotation of a molecule isn't something that you can determine just based on looking at a structure. It's something that you're going to have to determine experimentally. Now, it just so happens that the uh, optical rotation or the specific rotation here is a positive value, and for its anomer, it's got a negative value. But anytime you got a pair of epimers, their values are completely unrelated. They could both be positive values. They could both be negative values. In this particular case, we had one that was plus and the other one that was minus, but their magnitudes are completely unrelated. So just to summarize, diastereomers have different physical properties, which means that we can separate them using a, an appropriate lab technique. So for example, if you have two diastereomers that uh, can get converted into uh, from from liquid to gas. You can use fractional distillation to be able to separate them. Um, if they have different solubilities, you can use something like recrystallization in order to be able to separate them. But because they don't have identical physical properties, uh, it's possible to be able to separate diastereomers. Now, diastereomers are different at some chiral centers, but you got to make sure that it's not all of them. Because remember, when we have uh, molecules that are different at all chiral centers, then that means that we have a pair of enantiomers instead. And diastereomers rotate plane polarized light in unrelated ways. So they could both be minus in terms of the optical rotations, they could both be um, pluses, or they could be plus and minus. And in terms of the values, it's nothing that you can predict. It could only be uh, determined in the lab. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please support this channel by subscribing and hitting the like button. See you next time.